We're pleased today to have uh, our city manager, Joe Don Dunham, to be our speaker. And when I contacted him, uh, I said, tell what you accomplished in 2014. And we're almost to March now. And that's because we have bumped him a time or two to make way for other people that were coming from the Oklahoma City area and we were taking him for granted a little bit because he's always around. So I hope he's not too offended by that, but we certainly do appreciate his scheduling flexibility. It's made it easier for us. So let's welcome Joe Don Dunn. No, I told Lynn, I was really thinking that I waited to the last minute to confirm today because I thought maybe I'd get bumped again and I'd have a little bit longer and we could have this as a mid-year thing. But, um, we will kind of talk about some of the things we did accomplish in 2014. Um, during during the uh, last year, last calendar year, we had several projects that we really wanted to implement. Um, we had the ongoing street maintenance and repair program that started in 2013. We were working on uh, redundant, redundant power at the water well fields. We were working on some big annexation projects, both east of town and north uh, or south of town. Um, we really would like to try to clean up some internal pocket boundaries that we have within our co corporate limits. We have a few places internally that are actually outside of the city limits, but they're surrounded by the city limits. I would like kind of like get that kind of cleaned up. Um, we were, we were trying to prepare and implement a, pur a citywide purchasing ordinance, um, systematically bid out all of our major purchases, uh, update on police fines, uh, move our transfer station from Avard out to the old sewer treatment plant north of town. Uh, some of the other things we were trying to get accomplished were uh, prepare some internal documentation as to uh, water rates and what we're doing as far as billing on different entities, uh, update our existing water and sewer maps, and get existing job descriptions uh, prepared. Of these, you know, I really am happy that we accomplished most of the big things. Some of them are more on ongoing in nature but uh, we did accomplish some of the big deals. We are working on the, you know, it is ongoing and will be ongoing for the next, well, probably forever, but the street maintenance and repair. Uh, we are working systematically through town. I'm happy to report also, um, council did approve us last night to move forward with some external uh, contracting for repairs along uh, on the, in the downtown area. Um, right now, you know, we we have initially planned to make it all the way through town in five years with our initial pass. After that, we'll still have to come back and you know, the reason I say it's ongoing forever is we will always have street problems we need to address even after we've gone through this initial phase. Um, last year, during 2013, we worked on approximately 60 city blocks, repaired three intersections, and filled numerous defects in the city streets. Um, right now, we're working on or completing a project of completely repaving and constructing sh uh, six city blocks on the east side of town. Um, and like I say, this, is, this will continue on. Uh, the uh, annexation program. We did complete the annexation both north and east of town, or south and east of town. Um, east, east of town was accomplished on, on October 20th of 2014, and then south of town was accomplished on December 1st of 2014. These will be uh, uh, major accomplishments, I think, for some of the things that was outlined to me when I was hired that needed to be kind of need to happen. Uh, we do have the internal pockets that we still need to address. Uh, it's not that they're a big issue, but they are confusing. 
you've got a middle, you know, you've got an area of town that's in the mid, that's surrounded by corporate limits, but it's actually outside the city limits. That the city has no real jurisdiction on what happens within that pocket of land, and some of this, you know, it confuses the citizens. How come they can do it and I can't? Or how come they have, they don't have to get a permit to build, but I do? Um, it's all because, you know, yeah, you're in town, but you're actually, those people are actually outside of town. Uh, we did implement the new purchasing policy, which allows us a little bit of more flexibility in the way we uh, make our purchases. Uh, it allows us to streamline some operations and get things accomplished maybe a little bit quicker. We did update our police fines. Our police fines hadn't been updated since 1994. Uh, and we actually accomplished that in uh, January of 2014. So our police fines were way out of date. Um, hopefully people have noticed that we are starting the big hill uh, north of town. Uh, that's the side of the new transfer station. They have, we have awarded the contract on that. Con uh, it was a, it's a 180 day contract, Cedar Ridge Construction was awarded the contract to construct the building and the uh, retaining walls and the city is going to self-perform some of that work when we had initially bid that project out to do a turnkey operation it was about two million dollars and that was just way above what we felt we could afford by, by the city self performing some of that with help from the county officials and everything, so far we've saved almost $600,000 off the cost of that project. Uh, contracts were awarded for around $500,000 for the construction that's there. We'll have to run some water and sewer lines. We'll have to uh, do a little bit more dirt work once the retaining walls are completed. Uh, and then we'll have to do some internal work as far as uh, in installation of wiring and electrical for the building once it's up. The uh, redundant power at the well field. We hadn't had any real redundant power at the well field forever. And we have wired in eight of our most productive wells so that should a uh, power outage happen like we had a few years ago, We'll be able to back uh, generators in, hook them up, basically flip a switch, start the generator, and have water come into town almost immediately. Uh, la recently, we did purchase two new or two slightly used generators that are mobile to be utilized for that purpose. Um, we felt like I felt like this was a big accomplishment, especially after the issues that we had a couple of years ago. Um, what else would it take to keep it kind of a halfway adequate supply of water? Yeah. Two, the two will do it? Two will, two will do it. They will run the eight most productive wells that we have. Well, they'll run all eight of them. They'll run, those two generators will run all eight of the most productive wells that we had. Those wells were, are situated in such it was real easy to wire them together and bring to a central point so that the generators could be backed in, plugged in, and turned on to operate those wells. The other wells are more, are a little bit more remote in nature. It takes smaller generators to run them, and you almost have to have one per well. So this will get the eight most productive up almost immediately. Where the others that we, to get it going, if we need them, we need we'll have to go rent a generator, a small generator, or something to take out for those for that purpose. But they're still they're still wired up so that. It's a whole lot quicker turnaround time and uh, connect time than what we had a few years ago. How powerful a generator does it take per well? Um, these generators we bought are 150 kVA generators, I believe. We got 300 kV for eight, eight wells. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, we're still working on uh, systematically upgrading and replacing our water meters. I talked about this a little bit the last time I was here. 
one of the things that has slowed that project down is right after, right when we were fixing to let it out for bid, we found out about the possibility of a $500,000 grant. They had a, the governor had released a 26, water for 2060 drought relief grant through the Oklahoma Water Resources Board that we applied for. Uh, that had, that put a stop to the project because we couldn't start it and then get the grant money because the grant wouldn't have reimbursed anything that we had already started. So we've put that on hold. Uh, the project's ready to be bid out as soon as we get word from the grant, for, about the grant funding. The um, last conversation, I, had, I think the Water Resources Board had a meeting last night or yesterday that awarded three grants, or had the possibility to award three grantees that totaled about a million dollars for the, the grant funds. There were a million five in grant funds available. And I know that the, well, the Resources Board to told me that we would be having, they would be having another person on the March meeting. So we will, that project's basically on hold until March because we don't know if we're that other person or not, they wouldn't divulge that information to me. Um, so, but once once we have been, once we've received information on that, we'll start that project. Uh, expect to have it going by spring and summer. There'll be a, about a two to four week bidding period. We've there we've got vendors that have expressed a big interest in it. And should we not receive the grant, we do have funding in place to uh, completely do a turnkey project and get it in and get it done and taken care of. This will, yes, ma'am. Approximately, how much time is it going to take from we replace the first meter until we replace the last? Well, the contract the contract will be a 180 day contract. If the other, how fast the contractor comes in here and replaces those meters, uh, they've told me they could get it done in about three months, from first to last. But it'll be a 180-day contract. Um, Some of the other projects, like I say, that are more ongoing in nature are um, making sure that we're bidding out our large purchases to make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck, so to speak. Um, we want to make sure, you know, I take it real, I, I am real conscientious about the money we spend of the citizens, and I want to make sure we're spending it wisely and getting the best bang for our dollar. Uh, we're continuing to work on updating our utility system map. Uh, this will come in hand, this will be very beneficial in future years to have an updated map. Right now we have a lot of institutional knowledge with our employees, um, but we have a lot of employees that could retire. Once, they, once they've retired, that knowledge is gone if we don't do something now. And that's what we're trying to do is prepare for those, prepare for those maps for the future. Um, we had developed a capital improvement plan in past years. This, uh, th right, we need to update this documentation and we're working on that this year. Um, constantly we're updating job descriptions and personnel and making, tweaking our personnel uh, to try to hire the most uh, qualified employees also. Currently, we are eight full-time people down across the city of Alva. We've got two people, we need two people for our street department, we need three people for our sanitation department, and we need two people for our um, water department, and those are probably the most critical positions that we've got. We've got a couple of other positions that we are needing to hire on but they're not quite as critical. That's kind of what we had been doing over the last few, over the last year and what we feel like we've accomplished. I'd be happy to answer any questions or try to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, Larry. Are, are you, is the city thinking about moving the fire department? 
Well, the the fire department building is probably it well is inadequate to house our equipment right now. Our equipment has outgrown our space. It's not in the. It's something we're looking at. It's not in a near range plan, though. I mean, it's not something we're going to try to. It, we're going to try to accomplish within the next year or two. We've got to have space. You know, still, where would we put a new fire department? Um, unfortunately, the most attractive place to put a new fire department is probably the most attractive place for uh, retail development, also, and which is. You know which is which is the best. More yeah, and and a fire department is expensive to build. I mean, we would be talking. It, my experience with fire departments would be talking somewhere between three and five million to construct a new fire department. So it's something to plan for, but it's not something we're looking at in the near future. Yes, sir, Mr. Buckles. Uh, you annexed the property south and east. There's a major pipeline. East of town, uh -huh. comes south of town. Are you familiar with any of the regulations and requirements regarding how close uh, entities can build to that pipeline? Uh, you have, suppose somebody comes in and wants to permit to build another motel or a, a restaurant or something. How, what's the setback? I do not know off the top of my head. Uh, I know that that pipeline, especially the one east of town, the one the, the eastern pipeline that's east of town, mid eastern or mid continent, Panhandle yeah, Panhandle Eastern. That one is um, has got a pretty big setback on it. There's you know there's a lot of things that have to happen for you to even put a parking lot over that pipeline. I believe there's been, and that's just what I've what I have experienced since we've gotten here. I don't know the rules and regulations about what they may have, but it's it's quite an ordeal, I do know. What about the city? Will they establish their own setback requirements to protect themselves? We do, we do have requirements. I mean, as far as, like our, we put a sewer line out in that area recently. Of course, we've got an easement for that. We don't want people building over that easement. We've got a 20-foot easement for that sewer line. We'll have those easements within for water lines and any other um, any, anything else we put out there to keep people from constructing over our easements so that over our water or sewer lines so that we can go out there and repair things. We do have some plans for that. Yes, sir. The annexation effect you anticipate it to have on that sales tax revenue um, sales tax probably hadn't seen that large of a benefit where we've seen a huge benefit is in our use tax um, just off of what we had done east of town our use tax increased 20 at a minimum of twenty thousand dollars a month Will the annexation of this property affect our ability or our qualifications for block grant money and so forth? No, our, it's, the, it's, uh, block grant is not, uh, you know, our REIT grant or anything, it's not uh, land mass, it's population driven. Right. So as long as we're under the population, uh, now if we have a huge growth, you know, growth, that would have happened anyway. Then yeah, that could affect us. You know, if Alva grow, grows another five thousand people, yeah, that could that could affect the whether or not we get a, get a qualify for that REAP grant. But right now, we don't have that. We don't have any kind of uh, uh, restrictions on that. I mean, there's not any residential dwellings. It hadn't increased our population any by the annexations that we've done. Just as an example, what are some of these? There's three. Well, there's three of them that I'm aware of. One of them is over here, across right across the street from the hospital. There's a pocket there. One of them is out off of Noble Street, 
on um, it's a little area. Uh, yes. Um, and then uh, I'm discussing it with my uh, with the tax assessor. I think my when I did my survey east of town to annexing east of town, my surveyor didn't had left out an area over on East Flynn, yeah. Right there where the uh, No, um uh, behind the uh America's Best Value Inn. Right up there. Uh where the food bank, the Wesleyan House Food Bank is. That's that that my survey my surveyor didn't include that and it wasn't included in the legal description when we annexed it in. I thought it was when I was reading it, but the counties told me differently. Those are the three areas that I'm aware of. Those are outside the city limits. Mm -hmm. Those are all outside. Yeah, those are. But we well we we picked a spot. You know when we we said we're going to annex here. Uh, the the goal was to square up our our city limits at the time it was the main it was the main driving force and those were already outside the city limits and we picked a point there at Flynn Street to continue going out east and that's and that's the reason those if we were to expand any to the north yeah I would I would anticipate that. Uh, we would try to incorporate that, but at this time we haven't pursued anything north. How's the gun range? Uh, that's more of a. Unfortunately, my fire chief's more involved with the gun range project than I am. I know that they've got some uh, tourism money that they'd applied for to do some construction out uh, at the gun range. Um, it's being utilized. Yeah, but I haven't seen. I I don't know their construction time frame as far as what they were wanting to build. They basically done some dirt work, and the money's going to cover the shooting. I think is the first thing. Yeah, and I think that's what. And I don't know what any kind of construction timeline for that covered shooting is. Yes, sir. Hey, Joe, you mentioned uh, some of the challenges with the sanitation and trying to retain the workers. Has there been any analysis of alternatives on how we're dealing with sanitation? On refuse pickup. What we and as to whether or not we would uh, subcontract that out or anything like that. Right. right. We have. It, I would not anticipate us uh, subcontracting that out right now because, quite frankly, that's one of our revenue producers as utility revenue. We uh, we collect about five or six hundred thousand dollars a year more than what we bill for that. Um, what we are looking at to make sh right now the biggest problem we have is getting CDL drivers to drive our trucks. But when we get our transfer station completed, there's less of a travel. There's less travel distance, so our truck we can use utilize smaller trucks basically. Uh, and that's what I, right now we're looking at doing is utilizing smaller trucks. Don't have, smaller trucks don't have to have CDL drivers. See, they're a little, it's a little bit easier to hire for right now in our climate. Uh, smaller trucks are less wear and tear on our streets that we are so protective of and alleys that we need work that need work also. Um, so those are some of the things that we're looking at to uh, combat those challenges that we have for. Our, Sanitation department. Yes, sir. Uh, I've heard before that the uh, trash pickup does subsidize some other services. Is it the water that we're subsidizing primarily? Uh, wa water, water, are you, well, our utility department as whole, water, sewer, trash, all of it subsidizes anywhere from. Uh, Streets and parks and uh, police department and fire department. 
our general government fund. Uh, the utility department subsidizes, subsidizes the general fund operations that don't produce revenue. I mean, our fire department, you know, we, we transfer from our utility department roughly a million dollars a year to subsidize the general fund government, the general fund operations, police, fire, parks, swimming pool, uh, street department, the street department, and those type of things. Our fire department goes out in rural areas. Uh huh. What sort of a reimbursement do they get? We get a small reimbursement from the county on that for the fire runs. Um, we do it more as a um, and. and a small cash reimbursement, and I think they do. The county provides a country rig to go out and help with that. Yes, sir. Do you take into consideration having smaller uh, sanitation trucks and so forth? What will be the annual savings moving that transfer station to Avard up here? Um, you have less fuel. Less until we actually. Yeah, yeah it, it's kind of, it's really hard to uh, try to get that figure out there right now because we don't know how much time we're going to save. Right now, it's a uh, three out. You know, it's, to go out to Avar, drive out there, dump, and come back. It's about a three-hour trip for three guys. This will be a whole lot quicker. A whole lot, so the turnaround time will be a whole lot less. And until we actually get to operating that way, it's really hard to justify, figure out what that number is going to be because of all the variables. Uh, you've got fuel savings, you've got time savings, you've got, um, you know, all the stuff, well, you know, the bigger trucks not having to drive back and forth from Avard to Mino. When we, it's some of those variables that are really, would be more of a guesstimate right now until we actually get to operating that way. You know, um, more down the old KNS tire, mm -hmm. heard rumors that that's going to be a bronze. Is that true? If so, do you know the timeline or anything? I know that's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there have been no permits pulled on that, pulled on that property to build anything there. I will say that Brahms has been to town and looked. They have been very open about that. They are interested in Alva, and I think that they would be very interested in that corner. But I am, there have been no permits pulled. Anything that I would say here would be speculation, the same as what we're hearing on the street. I mean. Thank you for having me.